Hello, this is Steve at SteveHuffPhoto.com, and I am here today with the one, the Nikon one, the V1, as a matter of fact. So on the back of the Nikon one, you basically have this little rocker switch, which will change your aperture when you have when you're in aperture priority mode, which is what I always shoot in. Right now, I have the 10 millimeter f/2.8 attached. It's their pancake. There's no VR in this lens. Um, but it's it's the equivalent of like a 27 millimeter in 35 millimeter. But this does make the camera a nice small package. I wish it would have been an f2 at least, but what are you gonna do? The back of the V1, uh, as I showed on the top, you have the power button, the shutter button, and a movie button. You have your electronic viewfinder right here with the eye sensor, so it turns on when you lift it to your eye, and the EVF is excellent. Uh, it's not as good as the Sony NEX7, but it's right up there. Uh, it's close to it. Um, now the back of the camera, you have this mode dial switch, which a lot of people are complaining about. You have movie mode, you have regular picture mode, uh, and you can choose your shutter type between mechanical or electronic. I love the mechanical shutter sound of this camera. It sounds really cool. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. See how quiet it is? Now it will focus. Okay, listen to the shutter. It's a very quiet mechanical shutter. If you want, you can set it to electronic shutter. Um, you're going to get the fake shutter sound, which I believe can be turned off. I would hope so. But uh, that's for if you want to shoot in the high speed, 10 frames per second, or 60 frames per second mode. If 5 frames per second is enough for you, I'd go with the mechanical. It's very quiet, very smooth, quieter than a Leica M9 shutter. Let's put it that way. Over here you have your display button, um, basically is which you could turn off the display. You can have a minimal display or you can have more information. So you basically have those two options. Your playback button is right there. Okay. Uh, you have your trash button, your menu button. The menu is very easy and very smooth. Okay, if you want to reset your shooting options, exposure mode, this is where you choose what mode you want to shoot in. Aperture priority, shutter priority, programmed auto, manual, or scene auto selector. I've been using aperture. Image qualities, where you pick what kind of image quality you want, your RAW, your JPEG. Image size, you can go large, medium, small. Considering this is only a 10 megapixel camera, keeping it on large will still give you nice, easily easy and small files to work with on your computer. Uh, your continuous uh, shooting, single frame or continuous, shutter type, we already went over that, metering. So far I have found on the Nikon V1 it has the best metering of pretty much any camera I've ever shot with. Nikons have always been known for their metering and the V1 uh, is no exception. The matrix metering always nails it, it just seems like it always nails it. The Sony NEX7 I've been using seems to not have such reliable metering with their matrix or evaluative mode. It's a little under it underexposes more often than not. I found the Nikon is awesome, center weighted and spot. The only thing I don't like is if you put it in spot and you're using the EVF or LCD, you don't see your effect in real time. So you, you when you place the spot meter over your uh, section that you want to meter. You don't see what it's going to look like till after you take the photo. Um, white balance, ISO sensitivity. You can choose auto from 100 to 3200, which is what I keep it on. 100 to 800, 100 to 400, or you can choose up to 6400, which is the high one setting. Okay. Picture control is where you pick your picture style, standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait, or landscape. Stand Neutral gives a really nice skin tone, I found. Color space, active delighting. If you turn that on, you gain a little bit more dynamic range. It brings out the shadows. Sometimes it can look a little flat, so I leave it off because I like a more contrasty look. Long exposure noise reduction off. High ISO noise reduction. I keep it off because I found with it on, the pictures were getting muddy and mottled. With it off, you get a little grain, but the images are very sharp. Movie sound options. You can pick high sensitivity, low sensitivity, medium. This is for movie mode. Wind noise reduction because uh, the microphone in the camera does pick up a lot of wind noise. Interval timer shooting, which is cool to have. 
Uh, AF area mode, I always choose single point in the center. You can have tracking, which works very well, or auto area, which also works very well. Um, face priority, when that's on, it does recognize a face and focuses on the face. AF assist will shine a light out and help you in low light. Format memory card, this is under your settings menu. Uh, display brightness, grid display, sound settings, auto power off, timer. Um, assign your AEAFL button. Um, so there's, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. Um, shutter button AE lock, on or off, video mode. Flicker reduction, this is where you can set it to 50 or 60. Time zone, so it's basically your battery info, tells you how much charge remains on your battery. I always love the Nikons for this, so I have 93% charge left on my battery, and my battery age is still showing new because it is new. Firmware version. You also have a playback menu, which is basically self-explanatory. When you put it to the movie selector and go to your menu, you can choose movie settings, 1080, 60i, 1080, 30p, or 720, 60p. Um, again, the metering, all of this you can choose for your movie mode. So you can shoot in aperture priority and adjust aperture on the fly. You can shoot in full manual. Uh, so same thing, fade in and out. If you want your movies to fade in and out when you start, you can do it. Uh, so basically, that's your menu system. You can turn this dial also to smart photo selector. And when you go to shoot, it takes, I forgot how many frames, 60 maybe? It takes a bunch of frames and it gives you the five best photos. So if you're shooting somebody at a party, they're laughing, opening gifts or something, it will give you the five best photos that it took. Um, it, it supposedly is an intelligent camera and it can figure focus, exposure, framing, all of that out. Uh, I have yet to try that. It will be in my review, but from what I've heard, it actually works. Uh, motion snapshot, I feel, is the biggest gimmick. They should have eliminated that on this camera. As a matter of fact, they should have put the uh, shooting modes on the dial, aperture, manual, shutter priority, all of that. They could have gotten rid of motion snapshot. It's kind of cheesy. You basically take a picture, and it shoots a little bit of video of the scene. And then when you play it back, I don't know if I can play it back here. Let's see. When you play it, it shows a little like two second slow motion video, then a snapshot overlaid with music. So eh, some of you might like it. Uh, maybe the moms will like that. I have no idea. It's interesting, never done before, but I feel it's just kind of a gimmick. So that's basically it. The menu system of the Nikon V1 is very simple, very easy to use, very easy to understand. This is a simple camera, but it's also pretty damn powerful. This is your cover, this is your hot shoe where the flash goes. They make a cool flash for it, which I'm hoping to check out soon. Um, what else do we have? Your lens mount, this is your lens release button here. You have on this side, uh, your inputs, HDMI, microphone input, uh, and the USB. And that's about it. Um, you have your dial here, which is very smooth. One complaint when using the camera, I've noticed this dial switches very easily. So sometimes I'll be going to take a photo and realize I'm in movie mode. So keep an eye on that if you pick up one of these cameras. Uh, I'm going to have a full review of this camera. Even though it's so simple, there's not really much to write about that I haven't said in this review. But I will be showing a lot of samples with the camera, as well as this lens right here the 10 millimeter f2.8. I will also be showing images with the kit zoom, the 10 to 30, and the powerhouse video lens they came out with, the 10 to 100. This lens, when you put it on the camera and turn on the camera, the lens will come out, it automatically comes out, and you zoom with this rocker switch. So when you're taking video with this lens, it's very smooth in its uh, zooming. Very smooth and silent. You hear nothing. Um, and um, being sort of a professional lens, 
the image quality, I haven't tried the 30 to 110 yet, but the image quality of the 10 to 100 is excellent. So if you're taking video with this camera, and the camera seems to take beautiful video from what I've seen so far, um, this is the lens to get it. But it's 749 bucks for the lens alone. It does come with a hood. So there you go, the Nikon V1, couple of lenses. Um, I do not have the 30 to 110, the other kit zoom, but uh, that's just what I have for it, and this is what you will see in the review. So I hope you enjoy it. Actually, let me take some video real quick of the 10 to 100 on the Nikon V1. Okay, here we go. This is the 10 to 100. Look how huge. I mean, this thing is a monster. Um, there you go. It's very big. Okay, when I turn on the camera, here it is. It's huge, very huge lens. When I turn on the camera, the lens automatically pops out. And if you can see, hopefully this will focus. I'm using the NEX7 to record this video, by the way, uh, with the 18 to 55. This is the rocker switch. So this is how you zoom. You um, So here is the lens on the camera. And when you zoom, I'm zooming with this rocker switch. There's no dot, there's no barrels focusing, there's no barrel zooming. This is all solid, you can't turn any of it. So if you wanna um, zoom in, say, I would take the rocker switch, and you can go slowly, or you can go fast, but when you're watching the video back, it's silent, so you hear nothing. But see how slow I can zoom in? So it's more cinematic, it's not all jerky like if you had a uh, barrel zoom ring or whatever. So this is the 10 to 100. The expensive lens for the V system, but it's a great lens for video. This is what it was made for. It's also great for photos as well. So if you want to splurge and pay the $749, this is built up to Nikon Professional standards in my opinion. It's a very nice lens though it's not a lens you want to walk around every day with this camera. If that's the case you want to walk around with something like the uh, the little 10 which gives you almost a 28 millimeter equivalent. This gives you like a 27 to 280 ish uh, equivalent. So there you go the Nikon One system. Look for my full review soon at stevehuffphoto.com. I will see you there. Bye.